Uh, hi, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. This video is a quick, um, well, hopefully not too quick, I always ramble on. Uncivilized Vitality Kids Program is starting up in uh, 2024, January. We've got uh, quite a few um, kids signed up for the program, and I just uh, we have the parents meeting um, January, right after the, the holidays conclude, I think right after the cabin camp. And we're going to talk about, uh, at the parents' meeting, I'll explain more uh, detail the uh, program. We might have a Zoom link for that, um, for parents to Zoom and they can't make it. But I'll explain more about the actual uh, lessons and unit structure of the program. Uh, essentially, we're going to supplement the education process for children ages um, 5 through 15 in ways uh, that will help round them out as healthy and happy individuals in ways that we don't get necessarily in our um, standard education system anymore. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go through that. We can use this video as reference. So one of the things that is going to define um, a human, a fully developed human right away is its ability to take care of themselves. So self-reliance, uh, self-responsibility, which, which is uh, true freedom is being responsible. We'll talk about taking responsibility. And uh, we have, on Civilized Vitality, we have a uh, thought process on how education could be structured in broad strokes. And so we're going to talk about that. The uh, child needs to, any human, needs to be able to take care of themselves in, in order to stay happy and healthy as they get older. That means understanding, one, um, what it takes to be happy and healthy. It's not uh, more surgeries and pharmaceuticals and other uh, questionable processes by which civilization uh, over-civilizes us, um, which will lead me to another thought I had earlier about uh, do, do pigs make the sty or does the sty make pigs? And um, I read that uh, in a book recently from um, a guy, make, a British physician making social commentary from 20 years ago, 2024, 20, uh, 2005 or 2004, I can't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, but that question really stuck with me because my position uh, as Uncivilized Vitality uh, founder and the Uncivilized Living Foundation uh, charity is that the sty makes the pigs. And our education system currently being the sty, it's confusing our children. We're turning out, um, I don't call your children pigs, but you know what I'm saying, right? Sty makes the pigs. So let's move on. So um, I think that education is going to work like this. This is our Uncivilized Vitality position. The 10 orders of education should go uh, thusly. One is physical education. This is how to uh, move, exercise, how to not do stupid things that lead to chronic misuse or chronic overuse injuries, um, how to care for yourself, um, proper sunshine, uh, proper diet, proper rest, proper movement, um, ways to interact with each other. This is basically the UV program, the five vital paths, um, Works well for adults too, but that's kind of where it starts with physical education, or you could say the five vital paths. And that's mainly what the UV Kids program is going to focus on, is the physical education in the sense of the five vital paths. There will be a few others. The next area of education for a human, metaphysics. Now, metaphysics is the sense that uh, this is at the family uh, family level of my um, SBO, the UV um, organizational hierarchy. You can check out other videos on that. The individual, the family unit, the community, then you have cultures and then society. And there's subcultures as well, somewhere between community and, and culture level of organization. And the metaphysics, metaphysics education comes in at the family level. This is where you teach your child your values and beliefs. Right? And this is, everybody has different beliefs, and this is kind of where you uh, should focus on, which we have not done in the last uh, 100 years or so, focus on the values that your community and culture and society share, and the, the personal beliefs that maybe your family shares, your values are important. Do that by supporting your beliefs and not denigrating the beliefs of others. If you're raising your child uh, with Christian values and beliefs, great, but do that not at the expense of denigrating uh, necessarily Muslim beliefs or uh, Jewish beliefs or Hindu beliefs or Buddhist beliefs. So this gives your kid a, or gives your child a, um, a paradigm with which to start to view the world. At least they start with some basic values and beliefs. As they get older, they can explore further uh, some other uh, religious beliefs, uh, maybe work into here a sense of um, tolerance or, or intellectual curiosity and, and uh, 
uh, exploration, but values and beliefs start at home. That's sort of your meso- metaphysics, like what do we believe? Because kids are gonna ask these things very, very young before they start the formal education process. What happens when we die? What happens uh, where do babies come from? What are this? Uh, these sort of things. Why should I not um, be selfish? What, why is bullying bad? These are values set in the home early on. So that's why I point out that metaphysics is the second level of uh, education after how to um, care for themselves or brush their teeth and feed themselves and get the proper rest and regulate their emotions. Okay. After metaphysics, you're going to um, work on teaching the child uh, ethics. These have to come in early. These are going to be your cultural uh, and uh, societal level. Like you all belong to val- um, families and communities, and they may share, because they're in close geographic proximity, share the same values and customs and, and beliefs. But when you start working in big multicultural societies with lots of different beliefs, you're going to have to learn the rules uh, for uh, social behavior. How do we get along? Please and thank you. Don't interrupt. This sort of thing. Um, don't steal. Don't you know? Take from others. Don't take advantage. Don't push. Um, you know. Don't push your beliefs on others. That sort of thing. Uh, don't accept other people's beliefs necessarily just because you're told to. The, anyway, ethics it comes in. That's also a family level early education process. After you get through physic, uh, ethics, and uh, some of these are concurrently expressed through the family behavior as well, then you get into uh, art and uh, aesthetics. Art and aesthetics. This is, uh, you know, what do you like? What, what defines um, beauty or attractiveness? This is dance and music and art. Um, these things children are interested in very early. When I was, I was in elementary school in... Uh, you know, last century, the 1970s, and we did, we did, um, we learned letters and, and numbers and things, but we did music uh, class two or three times a week. We had art class two or three times a week. I mean, mostly it was a, a frazzled person standing around with a bunch of five-year-olds teaching them how to play the glockenspiel um, or the, you know, the xylophone, but, you know, it was, it was fun. Not for me. Uh, I hate noise of that sort, but everybody's got to be exposed to it. Uh, Dance, you know, rhythmic expression. These things also are early. Now, these things kind of happen in the home at the family level, right? The five vital paths, physical education. What are your values and beliefs? What are your ethics? How do you fit into uh, a culture and society? How do you support a well-functioning society? What what is the meaning of beauty and truth and goodness? These, These things are all taught in solid family units. Obviously, civilization has succeeded uh, to a great degree by disrupting the family unit uh, anymore, especially in modern uh, times. But uncivilized vitality is going back to that because that is the basis of a functioning society. These things happen at home. And then typically at the family community level, typically then you'll begin your formal education. And for that, you're going to want to go back to uh, when education actually began uh, and this wasn't just it, and you got into um, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, right? Like the ancient Greeks, the ones that kind of uh, championed the educated member of society. And grammar, logic, rhetoric. Think of grammar as learning to read and understanding that words have meaning. We can't just change the meaning of words to fit the latest Uh, social media whim or um, redefine our language into this weird 1984 double speak, right? So we all agree on grammar. There's grammatical rules. You have to learn to spell properly. You have to learn to read. Uh, There's just no way around it. That's how we communicate. And you have to understand, like Socrates said, first define the terms. That's grammar. Uh, It's a lot of rote memorization, a lot of understanding of rules and phonics. And it's, it's messy, but grammar is most important. Once you have the idea of grammar that terms mean things, you can begin to work with uh, suppositions and premises and statements and learn how to think. Uh, that's logic. That is sadly lacking in our current education system. So we're gonna we're gonna work on uh, logic and grammar. This could happen. This should happen while the child is young, so that from ages say eight to twelve. So that by the time you hit twelve, and you're getting a you've got a lot of um, emotional overwhelm. Uh, overwhelming emotions due to puberty and hormonal issues, you can separate um, emotional thinking from uh, slow, deliberate, rational thinking. And I think this will help quite a bit 
Uh, as I said, we're very much lacking that. Then you get down to the subject of rhetoric. Rhetoric would be um, communicating. Now this is, this one's a slippery uh, slippery slope um, for me, I, I think. So once you learn what terms are and you're able to define and uh, remember terms and read, you get into logic, how to think. Rhetoric is how to express um, argumentation or express your thoughts in both the written or spoken um, form. And this is where you would find things like, in my, my estimation, things like uh, economics and history and politics and um, things that are not, uh, despite whatever you say, not necessarily objective or can't be. History, for instance, is, is almost always subjective, right? You'll have some people say because X, uh, X event happened, these are the consequences. And you'll have someone else take a different subjective view of the X events and come up with a completely different conclusion. Uh, that falls under the realm of rhetoric. So subjective subjects like uh, communication skills, um, history, uh, economics, uh, polit politics. This is where you're gonna find a lot of sophisticated uh, education in the sense of the sophists who for Socrates were the, the absolute worst. They would use the skills, uh, the rhetorical skills to convince people less educated in logic and grammar that they didn't necessarily need logic and grammar, that they would explain things. Uh, this is the purview of probably 98% of your politicians and public figures and the uh, civilized um, uh, el elitism, the ones that are pro-civilization. So rhetoric is important to know how to communicate. It's also important to be a skilled rhetorician so that you can spot um, fallacies and, and, and distortions and just flat out false arguments. So uh, rhetoric will be next. After grammar, logic, rhetoric, the classic education, you'll get into part of your formal education, maths. Or, or math, I guess in America say math. Uh, maths, you're talking about your arithmetic, uh, your number theory, algebra, pre-calculus, trigonometry, geometry. And your math, as far as your math um, subjects, as far as your formal education goes, depends on what you're going to do. If you are working on... Um, let's say uh, engineering, you're gonna need to go all the way through very advanced maths. If you're doing uh, computers and software, you're gonna have to go uh, even further, get into like um, game theory and, and chaos mathematics and such. But the average person that's going to um, just live their normal life, do you have to go beyond math? Uh, do you need calc and pre-calc just to run your everyday life and, and balance your checkbook and, and uh, understand math enough to know that you're getting a good rate on a, on a, a mortgage uh, or a, a car note. So, so math is kind of subjective as far as how far you go in it, but math is part of formal education. And also the sciences. And I say this in the sense of the, the actual, what it means to be science, math being the original science, and the other four that fall in when people say, I'm a, I'm a scientist, they mean uh, one of five things. Either you're a mathematician, which is the base of all science, Science meaning using the scientific method of observe, uh, uh, hypothesize, test, and retest. Um, so you got your physics, chemistry, and then your biology. Uh, there's also uh, as um, astronomy there, like, uh, what's his nuts? Um, Neil Grass de Tyson, who is more of, a, more of a sophist than a scientist in my estimation, honestly because he's out there giving opinions on things that aren't necessarily his purview, but uh, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, so your sciences, uh, this, is where, this is my area. Uh, I'm in the biological sciences because I'm a human anatomist and a physician, so I would kind of fall there in the formal education process. Uh, then, after you've completed the five areas of your formal education, and this can go to different lengths, right, depending on what you're going to do, um, our public school system overemphasizes some of these, uh, right? Maths, the sciences, the, the uh, uh, rhetorical skills, only some of them, and then completely downplays or bypasses the importance of things like grammar and logic. Logic's almost missing completely from our public education system, along with the arts, aesthetics, things like civics and ethics. Uh, these are completely gone. I think that's to our detriment. So maybe we'll kind of reform the formal education process as we go. And then something else that's missing as far as an education goes, maybe the 10th order, once you've reached 
a certain age and you've attained enough uh, levels of formal education, it's time to start thinking vocational education. What are you going to do uh, for the rest of your life to earn uh, a living or to manage a living? Uncivilized Vitality teaches that uh, our premise is uh, three skills, right? Three skills is the Uncivilized Vitality answer to your vocational training. You should develop three skills, three, three things you're good at, three things you enjoy doing that you can either monetize or barter or find some way to uh, attain a living from. Some people are uh, electricians. They like to, they, they just enjoy electrical work. They think it's challenging and stimulating, interesting. They think about it. They, they, they kind of um, tend toward it. Maybe they're going to work for an electrical company. Maybe they just putter around as an amateur electrician building gizmos and doodads in their workshop. Some of them go on and love it so much. Um, I have a cousin who owns a very successful uh, electrician business. He, he, he's got, I have another friend who's an electrician. Um, he built from just doing side jobs and doing electrical work and then getting his certifications and his licenses. That's his primary main skill. And he's built it all the way up to a really, uh, really successful um, uh, I don't want to say electrical com electric company because that sounds like that thing on PBS uh, from when I was a kid, but he's an electrician. Uh, you can also, that might be your tertiary skill. You might just be somebody that putters with electric gear in your workshop. So that would be like your, um, your tertiary skill. Um, three skills in particular, something, for instance, I, I teach at a university. I have um, run and I, I've operated for a dozen years uh, martial arts schools. Uh, I'm a physician. So Probably my primary uh, skill is teaching or getting information across to uh, patients or students in, in some way. And then I have um, some other skills might not be as marketable, like uh, I like to read. I don't really know if that's one of my primary skill, primary, secondary, tertiary skills because it's hard to monetize that. I would love if some of you would pay me to sit around and read books all day. But so far, I can't get anyone to do it. Um, that's a different issue. So vocational training is important, and I think that... Our education system's dropping the ball here when all we do is tell kids like, hey, you've got to get into a good college. You've got to go on to uh, so-called higher education so that you can get a good paying career. And it's really interesting how we let 18-year-olds go uh, 80 to $120,000 in debt without any question uh, on a questionable future with no, uh, no collateral at all. But if an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old who is really had a great idea to revolutionize some aspects, say the electronics uh, industry came into a bank and said, hey, could I borrow $50,000 to start a small business uh, to make a living? There's no way he's gonna get that. Um, anyway, our whole system is kinda, kinda weird that way. So the uncivilized approach is going to be, go back and focus on these things at the family community level, following the five vital paths, learning to uh, move properly, uh, nourishment, restoration, hygiene, and community, taking care of yourself. We get into our values and ethics with our the, um, the 13 uh, tenets of our, our philosophy. And then we get out and doing field craft so you can learn things like the, uh, the aesthetics of nature and appreciation for things that, that can't quite be put into words. Grammar, logic, rhetoric, math, sciences. We'll get some of that in the UV Kids program, more of in a sort of a sneaky way. We'll sneak some math in there a little bit when they don't know they're, they're doing math directly. But this is more for the homeschooling focus uh, or for the public school. And then I think, once again, if it were up to me, I would put vocational options back into school. Wood shop, metal shop. Um, uh, ho we used to call it home ec where you go in. I really enjoyed home ec. We had, there's a room full of ovens. We, we baked little cakes and stuff. Um, I realized right away in that class I didn't want to be a baker because I'm terrible at it. Um, or uh, wood shop. One, I have four sons. One of my sons really loves carpentry work and fine carpentry, finished carpentry. He just, he's always building and doing things. And I mean, he's, he's not even, he's almost 21 and he can, um, I'm a terrible carpenter. Uh, you know, I'm in my fifties. I can't do what he does because he found something he likes and the wife and I encouraged him. Uh, our older son is, uh, he's got a great entrepreneurial um, spirit. So he's entrepreneurial spirit and he's trying to get into those things. So those boys are um, developing their three skills. We encourage our uncivilized uh, chapter members like the Genesee Turtles to develop three skills. I tease and say it's mostly for bartering after the grid fails, but I don't want to put a whole weird spin on this video, so let's keep moving. So the Uncivilized Vitality Kids program starts in January. Most of it is going to be supplementing uh, homeschooled groups and some public schooled uh, groups that are going to come afterwards in the afternoon. 
with the basis of their education. Uh, not quite getting into their formal education unless we get some interest in that in the future. Maybe we can line something up and help. Uh, we're going to get into the five vital paths, uh, the field craft, which is teaching craft and caution in the outdoors, and then the, the philosophical tenets to help out. And if we, as a society or a community, take hand in our an active hand in our children's education, maybe we can turn around some of the, the things that have gone uh, completely haywire. So this is my introductory video for the upcoming parents meeting. I'll explain that more in detail, uh, what these lessons are going to look like, and maybe give, uh, give a chance for some Q&A and some back and forth and shape that. Uh, but this was just so that people got up front my, uh, the uncivilized take on what it means to be educated. It's not quite what we have now, slightly different, but this is part of being a, a socialized human and not a civilized um, human. So there's that. And um, if that's at all interesting, leave a comment below if you're going to come to the parents meeting or if you're interested, I can have uh, Caitlin respond to any inquiries and we, we can get that set up and then go from there. So hope you, um, hope you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications and check out some other playlists that aren't just wild ramblings about upcoming programs. Um, that's it.